And I'm just going to ask you to open your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm going to read something from verses 1 to 7. Actually, follow along. I'll be reading from the Message Bible. I know everybody has different interpretations. But the Lord has given me a word today just to encourage our hearts in this season and time. So I'll be reading from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. And it reads, One day the wife of a man from the guild of the prophets called out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You well know what good man he was, devoted to God. And now the man to whom he was in debt is on his way to collect by taking my two children as slaves. Elisha said, I wonder how I can help. I could be of help. Tell me, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. Well, I do have a little oil. Here's what you do, said Elisha. Go up and down the street and borrow jugs and bowls from all your neighbors. And not just a few. All you can get. Then come home and lock the door behind you. You and your sons, pour oil in each container. When each is full, set it aside. She did what he said. She locked the door behind her and her sons. As they brought the containers to her, she filled them. When all the jugs and the bowls were full, she said to one of her sons, Another jug, please. He said, That's it. There are no more jugs. The oil stopped. Then the oil stopped. She went and told the story to the man of God. He said, go sell the oil and make good on your debts. Live both you and your sons on what's left. It's customary for me to pray. So just bow your heads with me before I begin to minister. Father, I thank you for this word today that we're about to hear. I believe, dear Lord God, it will be made perfect in converting our souls. In this season and time, dear Lord God, we need your word. And I believe what is about to be said today through me, not by me, but through me, Lord, will add value to our lives and allow us to experience the true victorious life of a Christian. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about the topic of using what you got. Using what you got. When we look back on 2020 and everything that we've experienced, and as we embark in our journey to 2021, a lot of us may assume that what I need to get done, I don't have all the necessary resources. And may, that may be, to some people, their reality. But I want to submit one thought to you that God in all of his goodness will not allow you to be in lack of anything that you may need. If you don't have it, chances are you don't need it. If you don't have it, chances are you don't need it. It's familiar to have based upon our plans, but all throughout scripture, we see God doing great things out of nothing making things come to fruition without having the necessary components necessary to get the job done. The God you serve will tell you to go get wine and not get one grape. Grapes may be necessary in making wine, but when you add God to the equation, the resources you may need is not required as long as you have him. The people who you may think you need as long as you have God, you have all you need. It may sound funny for those that are carnal, but I will openly tell you, one man and God, one man and one woman makes a majority. In times in life, you got to use what you got. Pastoring a diverse church, I realize that not only culturally, but also where they are in life, sometimes it could be challenging to preach a message that could accommodate everyone. The same person that comes on the bus could also be another person that comes in on a fancier car. One thing is in common with everybody else is poverty. There are different forms of poverty though. Poverty, when we think of poverty, we think only about money. But there are some people that are in emotional poverty. They lack self-esteem. Some of them, it's not only about money. They may have money, but they're lonely. 
They don't have somebody else. Poverty has different forms and shape. And everybody in some point in time experiences lack. It just depends on what type of outfit that the lack is wearing. It could be relational. It could be financial. It could be something internal. This woman, in terms of the scripture, is going through a financial situation, though. It's a financial lot she's going through. And what I've learned in my life through this text, and it's something for you to take note on, this woman was a wife to one of the prophets. The Bible said that the man loved the Lord. The Bible said that the man loved the Lord and that he was faithful. But at the same time, the same time a calamity was going on in his home. There was a, a season of lack that was going on that made him go into debt. And he couldn't, be, he couldn't begin to deal with the debt and he died. And his family is left with the debt. It's, it's a horrific thing to experience, but it came to a man that loved the Lord. So it tells me then that bad things can happen in my life. And it's not an act of my disobedience. Unfortunate things can take place in my life. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I have done anything wrong. Say with me, same with this man's family in the scriptures and also same with you. Just because bad things happen, it doesn't mean that you are the origin of it. But God in his riches and mercy, God who is able to do all things is able to take us out of it. And when you feel like you have a problem and you don't have an answer to it, don't believe that the answer is going to come outside of you. It's outside of your reach. You got to use what you got. You got to use what you got. Every answer you have, everything that you need to make sure 2021 is a great, great year for you, it is in your house. It is stored up within you. If you needed it, God would never allow you to lack it. God would never allow you to lack it. There are, there are plenty of steps I've written down to make sure that as believers, we know step by step, how do I go about working with God to better my future and making sure I use what I got. The Bible makes it abundantly clear in verse 1 that this woman, she called to Elisha. She called to Elisha. She went to God first. And any calamity you may have, and, and especially in this season of discovery, you got to understand that you got to go to God first. One of the problems we have as people, when we go, when we have problems, we try everything we possibly can to do. And at the end, when we have done tried everything that we thought that was necessary to do, what do we usually say? We say, oh, well, okay, now the only thing left to do is to pray. And sometimes I hear, I'm like, what are you talking about? That was the first thing you should have done. It shouldn't be the last thing you've done, you should do. It's supposed to be the first thing that you do. She went to Elisha first. And we have to understand in this text, the season that we're in. There was a prophet before Elisha that was named Elijah. His name declared that Jehovah is Lord. Jehovah is Lord. And this is why Elijah dealt with kings. He dealt with governments. He dealt with everything at a high level. But Elisha, his name interprets the servitude of God. And this is why in this season we have to understand something. That God is posturing himself to serve you in this season. God is posturing himself to serve you in this season. This is why the Bible tells us that how Elisha did more miracles than Elijah. It's not because Elisha was more anointed. Not only that, but because when you're serving the people, there's more people in the church than a pastor. There are more people in a country than, than a governor or a president. If you're only to serve the governor, then it's one person you're serving. But if you're serving people, there's plenty of people to serve. And what I'm telling you that when God is posturing himself to serve, serve you as his people, prepare your hearts for it. Go to him first. Don't waste all your resources doing things that you think is rationally correct. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that there was a woman that had an issue of blood. And the Bible said that she spent money. She devoted 
time and wasted all of her riches and her wealth in dealing with this issue and it came to no avail. It was only in the end that she decided to say, okay then, let me go to Jesus. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, then I will be made whole. If only she went to Jesus first. She would have been, she would have been made whole and at the same time wealthy. When we go to God at the end, too much of our wealth and resources get wasted. If you are truly honest with yourself and look back in your life and how much decisions you made and you said, I never went with God first. If you were honest with yourself, the next time it comes around, because that's wisdom to take your life experiences to make a good decision. He said, this time around, I'm going to God first. The reason why we don't go to God first, because we don't have a good track record and a pedigree of spending time with him. Hearing from the Lord is hard for some people because they don't spend time with him. And they feel as if praying is not practical. But for the believer, praying is practical. It is practical to pray. The question is, what is the right prayer? What is the right prayer? She goes to Elisha first. That is the first step you need to do. When I'm dealing with a crisis, if I'm trying to be a problem solver, and I don't have the necessary resources to get the job done, because 2020 probably took every, probably cleaned me out. I don't have everything I need to get what I want done. The first step you need to do is go to God first. Go to God first. Jesus is the wonderful counsel. You'll always hear me say this. It is interpreted as the extraordinary strategist. You need a plan. You, you, don't, you need a plan. And Jesus will give you that plan. He goes to, she goes to Elisha. And when she goes to Elisha, Elisha says, okay then. He assesses the situation. This woman is in debt. But the answer to her problem is in her house. So imagine some of us, and that's some of us today. We go to a light, we go to God, and we're expecting God to pull out the checkbook and to sign something and give it to you. God says, No, 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 hold up, wait a minute. What's in your house? What is in your house? It is not so much to pray and ask God for more resources. Our prayer should be, God, teach me how to be more resourceful. Everything you need, it is in your house. And if you don't have it, I promise you, you probably don't need it to get started off. The second step we need to do, the first step is to go to God. The second step is to understand what do you have? At times we focus on what we don't have. And that's what makes us sometimes feel inefficient, that we can't do something. But what you have can open doors for you. I'm talking for those people who are once working in offices and now you're baking. That baking can get you to the next level. Those who, you know, had some corporate job and now it's shut down. You don't know what to do for your money. But when you were younger, you used to braid hair. That hairstyling thing could probably open doors for you. Always remember, God wants to do the miracle through you. What is in your house? What is in your house? Because it is what you have. God wants to use. And the beautiful thing about it, it doesn't matter the amount of what you have. It's what you have and that you are cognizant that I have it. That is what God wants to use. The very littlest things you may have, God can make you do great things. I want to talk to those people that know about a man named Gideon who had a large army and God told him to cut the numbers down. It's not about how much you have. The question is, do you possess it? Do you have it? And when I mean possess it, do you have it up here that yes, I have this skill. I have this ability. I have this material thing. God wants to do the miracle through you. 
You have the means. He says, what is in your house? I'm declaring to you today that God doesn't want to only give you a blank check and fix your problem. He wants to open your eyes to the fact that you are an answer to your own problem. You are your own untapped resources in you using what you have. You must go to God first. And then secondly, assess what is within your reach as a means. Because sometimes you think it's a little thing. But maybe it's only little because it's only in a seed form. You've never been watering it. you never paid attention to it. The Bible said that the woman said she has nothing save a little jar of oil. She never blew up the oil like it was something special. It was something little and insignificant to her. It was probably not like a big canister of oil for cooking. It was probably like a little jar of oil they used to even anoint the children's head. But it's the littlest thing God wants to use. Because it doesn't matter the size or the amount that you have. You may think, I may not have enough money to start this business. I may not have a mo the money to pay down on this house that I want to get. But let me tell you something. With the, with the amount that you have, if you couple it with God, it is enough. God in one person makes a majority. There was a time when the Bible tells us that how Jesus was there with the multitude and that how the multitude was hungry. The multitude was hungry. And Jesus said and asked his disciples, what do we have to feed them? What do we have to feed them? The disciples said that the people are hungry. Jesus asked the disciples, what do you have? This is not the first time and the only time you will see this in scripture. All throughout scripture, God will do his miracle based on what you have. And you have something. 2021 is going to be a great year. And it won't be a year of, of grandiose miracles. God walking on water for you. It's going to be a year where you're going to look at what you have. And understand it's a great thing. It's a great amount and it will do great things because it is coupled with God. You got to understand what is in your house. Not only your literal house, but your vessel. What do you have in here? Who are you? What do you possess as skill and ability? Because whatever the problem is going on in your life, God wants to do the miracle through you. And you have to believe that. That comes with conviction. That comes with faith. Whenever God is being used to, to, to solve a problem, God will always go through the means of stretching your faith. The Bible said that the prophet told her to go to all your neighbors. Ask them for jars. Don't ask for a little. Ask for a lot. At the end of this message, that is the biggest point. But we'll talk about it at the end. Don't ask for a little. Don't ask for a little. Ask for a lot. Go up and down the street, according to the King James, it says. Go up and down the street. Ask your neighbors for jars. He's getting her outside of her comfort zone. And I want to let you know, because it's not easy to ask people for jars. It's not easy knocking on people's doors. And maybe they're her neighbors, they're her friends, and whatnot. But for some of us, it's not that easy. For some of us, we'd rather be hungry than ask and tell somebody else that I'm hungry. But I want to let you know today, using what you got is also not what's in your house. Because when God told Abraham, as to you in your house, it was talking about everybody within his social reach. God has surrounded you with people who love and care about you. And sometimes you cannot be like the crazy Christian, believing that God is going to allow somebody to be filled with the Holy Ghost and come and know that you have a problem. Because whenever there is relationship, it's in the scripture, search it for yourself. God will always want to go the route that we have conversation about our troubles. Conversations about what we're going through. It's not always going to come magically to the person that, hey, this person's hungry. But through the power of humility and us going to our brother and sister in our times of need, that is the greatest and the most powerful thing you can do. Because while you are doing that, rem be reminded that the devil is always trying to seek whom he can devour. And the lion goes after the little sheep that toggle at the back. 
Well, he's doing what he can to separate you. You are doing what you can to stay connected with your spiritual family. You go to your neighbor. The Bible's telling you, you go to your neighbor. Don't always expect your neighbors to come to you. You know, the Holy Spirit will even tell you. I don't even function like that. It's not every time I'm letting your neighbor know that you are in trouble. Because Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is an internal light. The Holy Spirit is working on that individual. But more times than not, the scripture will always admonish us to go to our neighbor. Use what, using what you got is also a social thing as well. Don't be afraid to go to your spiritual family. Go to your neighbors. Ask them for the jars. He's allowing her to go outside of her comfort zone. And he's challenging her to be proactive. You can't use what you got and be lazy. You cannot ask God to do something that you are not willing to be a co-laborer for. I will say it again. You cannot ask God to work something out as a miracle. Because what makes a miracle a blessing is how much natural you put out for God to put some super on. Hello. And that's in the text. Because if she asks for more jars, she would have still had more oil to produce. But if she asks for more jars, and what if she asked for little jars? The oil would have stopped. Because where you stop doing your natural, that is where the supernatural stops. God challenged her to be proactive. And I'm telling you today that I am challenging you to be proactive for your future. You cannot just ask God to work a miracle. He can work a miracle. The miracle can take place. But it always hinges on your natural. It depends on your natural effort that makes that miracle into a blessing. That's not true, Pastor Dennis. Well, okay, that's fine. Canada's a free country. You can say whatever you want and think and believe whatever you want. But I am telling you, when Jesus told them to roll the stone, if those people never rolled away that stone, Lazarus is not getting up. There's a reason why Jesus told them to roll the stone. When they wanted wine, at the marriage supper, if G, when Jesus told them to go get the pots and vessel of waters and bring it up, bring it to him. If they've never done it, I promise you, wine wouldn't, be, wouldn't have been served that day. The miracle would not have taken place. Always remember that. I am teaching you this year in this season of discovery on how God works. You can't just love God alone. You have to know how he works. God will do the miracle, but what makes the miracle into a blessing and a sizable blessing, it depends on how much natural work are you doing. Because as much as you do the natural, God is constantly putting his super on it. Constantly. You have to be proactive. You have to be proactive. You have to be as far as proactive, the Bible says, and I don't want to be long because it's baptism as well, that the Bible said when she got all the jars, I can imagine her understanding the miracle that's supposed to take place and probably came with all the jars and with the little oil and probably walked up to Elisha and said, okay, you could pour it in there. The Bible said she filled the jars. She filled the jars. God wants to do the work through you. You're asking God to do a miracle, but you're not acknowledging how much natural has to be added to make the miracle to become a blessing. Thank be to God, she asked for the right amount of jars to come in. The right amount of jars to come in. To pay off the debts. If she was too fearful to step out of her comfort zone, who knows what dilemma would have still befell, befallen on that house. And when she got the jars, she shut the door behind her. And the Bible said that she filled them up. And as much as she continued to pour, the oil continued to flow. flow. As much as she was proactive, as much as she continued to be obedient to the instructions, to the word of God. Because she went to God first. She went to the Elisha first. And she followed what the instruction was. And she was proactive about it. The oil continued to flow. And I want to let you know again, just to repeat it, that as long as you are constantly doing your part, God is faithful and just to do his. His job is to do the miracle. 
It is your natural that converts the miracle into the blessing. If you don't roll away the stone, if you don't go and get those, those, those vessels of water so Jesus can turn the water into wine, if you don't do your part, if you don't go to the pool and to wash the dirt out of your eyes can you don't so, so that you can see. Do you see in scripture how much that you have to do to make sure the miracle can become the blessing? Always remember, you got to use what you got. You got to use what you got. And while you're using what you got, you got to be proactive. You got to be proactive. You go to God first. You have the mental understanding to look what's in your house. Secondly, thirdly, you got to be proactive. You got to be proactive. You can't just sit there and pray and sit down and wait for the wait for God to do something for you. He's he's God. He's not your butler. Understand that. He is sovereign. He is not your butler. But also, he is your father. He is very much concerned with your spiritual development. Every miracle he does, the base component will always be something that will stretch your faith and allow you to trust him more and to follow his instructions more. Always. That is just how God works. That is just how he works. The Bible said that she filled all the jars. And when she said, another jar, please, they said, there's no more jars. And then the oil stopped. The moment you stop being proactive, the moment you stop doing the natural component, the super stops. God super stops. We think when we say supernatural, God is doing both. No, you do natural, God does super. God is not going through an identity crisis. He knows who he is. And he knows his contribution. And the Bible said that whenever, the, when the jars stopped coming, that's when the oil stopped. What would have happened if she didn't ask for enough? What would have happened if she stopped prematurely? What would have happened then also on the flip side if she kept on asking for jars? Do you, could, could you consider the degree of wealth she would have obtained from a, from a place of nothing? From a place of nothing. From nothing. The degree of wealth that she could have possessed. I want to let you know today, because I don't want to be long-winded, that you got to use what you got. You got to be the hustler this year. And you being the hustler may think that it's all you. Then why trust in God? It's not all you. It's not all you. God is going to do his part. And the mindset of the hustler is very simple. The hustler doesn't worry about if he, if he or she has everything. They use and, and do what they got to do. They don't worry if they have everything. But their mindset is at the place that they make sure they make everything out of what they have. It's not about if you have everything. It's about making the most out of everything. You just got to use what you got. Use what you have. This year, you may feel that 2020 stripped you from a lot. A lot of people probably thinking that their savings have been depleted and whatnot. No, but little what you have. Little is much when God is in it. So I'm not discouraged this year. And I hope and pray that you are not discouraged as well. Everything you need, it is in your house. Just follow these simple steps. Go to God first for the plan. From an internal perspective, always remember the resource you need is inside you. The woman went to the well to get water. The only thing different that Jesus was telling her was that, you know what, you came for this well for water. But I came so you could have water flow in, inside of you. You're your own untapped resource, eh? It's in your house. It's in your house. What do I have inside of me? When you, when you, when you accomplish those two steps, be proactive. Be proactive. But you have to go to God first for the direction. Because mo mo momentum is a dangerous thing when it's going the wrong way. You can't stop. Momentum is a great thing only when it's going in the right direction.
So you got to go to God first for the direction. Then assess what you have. When you have all those things, be proactive. Don't sleep on yourself. Don't sleep on your dream. Don't get lazy. Be proactive. Go out there. Go, go out there. Utilize who you have because friendships is a great thing. Friends are really destiny helpers. They help you to get to where you need to be. There's nothing wrong with going to your spiritual family. Not sitting down expecting them to come to you. Even when you're sick, the Bible says, you are supposed to be brought to the elders. That's Bible. That's Bible. And we have to, at this year, become Bible-believing people and adhere to the Word of God in all aspects. This is Scripture. This is what the Scripture is saying so that we can get the victory. Understand that when the miracle is about to take place, God wants you to pour the oil. God wants you to initiate the Bible said that the Holy Spirit is a helper, not an initiator. This is what you got to do your natural. So some super could go get on what you're doing. Using what you got forces you to be proactive and not just settle for what life is giving you. And the Bible says that, you know, when she stopped with the jars, that's what stopped the anointing. A lot of times they say the danger to success, new success, it's previous success. Sometimes we get complacent and we settle for what we have already had and thinking that we're already done and we're good. And God is telling us in this text that more could have been done. Greater wealth could have been established if even then there, were, there was more jars. The Bible said that when she was said and when it was all said and done, she went to the prophet. Because when success comes, you, it's good that you don't do your own thing with it. It's the same way. You still got to go to God. And how do I manage the success? What did the, what did the prophet say? Take care of your debt. Take care of your debt. And then you and your sons live off the rest. And I love that text. Because that breaks down every mental thought. Believing that God just wants you just to get by. By the skin of your teeth. No, God wants you to live in excess. He wants you to live in excess. But the miracle took place. But what converted it into a great blessing was her proactiveness. She followed the instructions of the Lord. She did what she had to do. And she did as much as she could do on her own with her sons. She was proactive. It is our natural applied to the miracle that makes it into the blessing that we need. If she did subpar natural work the miracle still would have took in place jars would have been filled with a little bit of oil but it wouldn't be enough you have to be proactive sometimes it's not about you doing the right if you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing sometimes you're doing the right thing you're just not doing it enough you got to do it enough because God wants you to do it at a place that you can live off of the rest God wants you to live in excess and the little that you have in your house, it can make you live in excess. If you follow the instructions of the Lord. If you just open your eyes and see what you have and you're able to see it as God sees it. He didn't ask the woman, how much of it did you have? Is what, do you have it? Do you have it? And always remember that God wants you to live in the excess. Let it handle what it needs to handle and the excess you guys live off of it. And that's what God wants us to have and experience this year. My, my, my simple admonition to you for this year in closing is that whatever you have in your house, be it a gift, be it a skill, a talent, if that's what you got, use it to the best of your ability. Use it. And it may be a simple gift. It may be a little gift. The Bible said it was only a little bit of a little bit of oil, she said. But that little thing, God wants to make it great. And probably the only reason why it's little, because it hasn't been watered. Pay attention to every little ability you have. Because from it, blessings could flow into your life. And if she didn't consider the little thing, her children would have been slaves. Understand this, using what you got can save another generation as well. 
The little thing that you do, I'm still talking to the little bakers, the little hair make, the hairdressers that are going on, those who are working and serving in financial sectors. The little business you have can liberate another generation. A liberate another generation. And when it's handling everything going on in the present moment, God is teaching us it can create a different degree of wealth that we can live off of. That is my encouragement for you today. That is the word of the Lord. That is gospel. That is good news to know that the little you may possibly have, the little thing that you are doing, if you continue to be proactive with it, it can handle all of your problems and also sustain you to live a comfortable and victorious life. And that's my prayer for you today. That, you, that God will open your eyes to know, for you to see that I have great things in my house. I have a great gift that I can use. The Bible said it will make room for you. It will put you before governors and kings. It's about now is the time that you start appropriating, appropriating it. So bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for this word. I thank you, dear Lord God, because you've allowed us to know that when the Holy Spirit comes into us, he doesn't come into us empty-handed. He comes into us with gifts and abilities, O oh Lord God. Gifts and abilities that could create wealth for us. We pray in this season in time, not, not, not really concerned of what 2020 has done to us, but we believe, dear Lord God, that 2021 is going to be building for better. And whatever that is left over, we're going to use that, dear Lord God, to generate wealth. We are not left the Lord God lacking anything what we don't have is what we don't need everything we need right now is is it is within our grasp open our eyes to see it broaden the capacity of our anointing to stretch it open our ears that we can hear you when you speak Give us the boldness to be proactive, dear Lord God. Give us the boldness and the strength not to be weary, dear Lord God, in this season. Because when it's all said and done, dear Lord God, there is a miracle you want to work through us. And we will not be lazy in this season. We will not doubt in this season. Your children will function in faith. Because any miracle you do, any instruction you do, Lord, it will always go the route that stretches our faith. We thank you, dear Lord God. We're not asking you to increase resources. We're asking you as our Father to teach us how to be more resourceful. And we thank you for that. And if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, Lord Jesus, as a personal Savior, I ask the Lord God that you will reveal yourself to them in, the, in your own special way. I thank you, dear Lord God, for sustaining them this far. But now is the time that they come home. Call upon them, I pray, dear Lord God. And when they respond to you, I pray that you will reveal yourself to them and that they will find themselves back into your family. And I believe this in Jesus' name. And if you believe that, just say amen with me. And if you have given your heart to the Lord, I'm just going to invite you just to go look on our website at Kingsway Community Life Center. There's a place that you can upload your information. And I would love to speak to you personally. So God bless you. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay blessed. You don't lack anything. Just use what you got. Everything is a lot. Little is much when God is in it. God bless you.